Looking for a new place to eat out or maybe just driving through Spokane and need a place to stop? We are talking about my top five favorite places to eat that maybe you don't know about. Or if you type in a Google search on where to eat in Spokane, these ones might not pop up, but they're still seriously amazing places to eat. So stick around, check it out. We have everything from fancy food to just quick stops. Let's see if we can introduce you to something new and exciting. Hey there, my name is Hayden Halstead with the Halstead Home Team, your favorite Spokane realtor. And today we're talking about five amazing restaurants that I eat at all the time and I think are super awesome, but don't get enough credit. So this video is for you. Let's get right into it. The first restaurant we have is the Gilded Unicorn. The Gilded Unicorn is located at the corner of Monroe and First, just across the street from the Fox Theater or down the street from the Davenport. So it's right in central downtown. If you're gonna go see the symphony or a concert at the Knitting Factory, it's a great spot because you're just, you're right there next to a lot of the concert venues. I'd say this one is more for your date night, your upscale, that's, uh, but you're looking to try something new rather than the traditional like Clinker Daggers, Churchill's, Wild Sage, something like that. The ones that people tend to go to for those fancy date nights. This one will kind of spice it up a little bit. It has a really unique menu and it's in a really cool space. So the Gilded Unicorn is easy and hard to find at the same time because uh, it's basically, there's no storefront. It's right, it's in the basement of the building actually, but there's a big painted sign on the side of the building that says Gilded Unicorn, it points down. So you head in the door, head downstairs, and what's really cool is kind of with the name, you're down in like what feels like the basement of like a castle or something. You're in a, like a full tavern, you got rock walls, the like big chandeliers, like it feels super, feels like you're, eating in the Knights Round Table or something like that. It's just like, it's a very cool space and just being, yeah, down below, like, but the ceilings are super high. So you're like very, it's like a very deep basement. So super unique atmosphere. And I think that's part of the experience as well. This is one of Adam Hegstead's restaurants. He's a super well-known chef in the area who's opened quite a few super successful restaurants. And so this is one of his more upscale ones, but let's just like read through the menu a little bit here. Cause they have some super interesting items that you can you can order. So it goes anywhere from salmon cakes to truffle and Reggiano popcorn to start. Got fancy charcuterie boards and devil on horseback it is bacon wrapped dates with crushed almonds and an orange glaze. It's also the way the menu is laid out is like it's like a story almost like you're going into the a fairy tale, a fantasy or something. So your appetizers are your introduction. Your prologue is like your salad or the small like a small bowl of soup or something that you're gonna start with. The story is your entree and the end is your dessert. And so, yeah, some of these entrees are, they're super meaty, they're super hearty, like you're at, you were a hardworking knight, something like that. King, I guess is another way, or you're a king and you're eating very hearty and stuff like that. So you're not gonna walk away. It's not one of those places where you're gonna, you go out for an upscale nice dinner and you walk away hungry because the portions are so small. Like you're gonna leave here full and satisfied and uh, what I like to call my, I like to know, <laughs> it's a real estate question, real estate thing, but I, I'm really concerned about my price per square foot on the food that I order. So I, if the price is high, I do expect a decent amount of food for me to feel happy about what I got. So in terms of entrees, they've got pan roasted pork chop, tater tot casserole that has brisket and roasted wild mushrooms in it with a sherry cream sauce. Those are both amazing. The unicorn mac and cheese, it, I had that, that was freaking wild. It was amazing. It was wild. Gouda and aged white cheddar on that. So, and duck and pancakes. So they have rice cakes topped with crispy fried duck. So very unique menu. Not something that you're going to come across anywhere else, but I think it's super fun that you get to go down into a restaurant that feels very themed of being back in the knights and shining armor era. I think it's very fun to just feel like you're going down to an old tavern where you might run into an English king or queen somewhere. You're having a hearty meal and and, but I feel it's very upscale, very nice, and it's just much more unique experience than some of your classic fancy dinner nights out here in Spokane. So would highly recommend on your next date night out for something as a change of pace. Very next one is for those people just looking for a great burger. I feel like people are always looking for the best burger in Spokane, and we have a lot of really good burgers, especially on the faster side. So I mean, we have Dick's Hamburgers on Sprague, and, and then like Delish is another one, Zip 
Zips has great hamburgers. So fast food, local fast food wise, Spokane does have amazing burgers. But if you're looking for more of a sit down one, the best one that I think I found is Wisconsin Burger. So Wisconsin Burger is actually over in the Perry District. And so it's actually really convenient if you're swinging through town and you just wanna jump off the freeway and grab something, very easy access to it. Uh, but seriously, these burgers are insane. They're like the big thing. I mean in the name Wisconsin They involve cheese curds and a lot of things and so they have a burger that is stacked with cheese curds on it That you can get cheese curds as an <laughs> as a appetizer as well Which I have I'm not sure if it's a mistake or not But it's it's a lot to order the cheese curds as an appetizer plus get the burger with cheese curds on it Wisconsin burger also has like 80 variations or 80 canned beers basically plus 10 taps so they have just this huge huge like grocery store style refrigerator that you can pick the canned beer from um, or they have a handful on tap. So there's tons of like an overwhelming amount of selection for beer, but tons of super fun burgers. Ones that I highly recommend are the Aji's. That's the one with the cheese curds on it. And then the German town is seriously so good because it's uh, a butterfly half house bratwurst and then sharp cheddar cheese, beer, house made beer mustard, sauerkraut and a, on a pretzel bun. So it is totally your Bavar Bavarian dream. Um, but they have, uh, other burgers that are vegetarian, they have like four vegetarian options. They make house-made sausages, so you can get an awesome like bratwurst style hot dog type thing if you're not feeling a hamburger. And uh, and just a lot of, it's just a cool atmosphere. So it's a great little neighborhood. It doesn't sit a lot, seat a lot of people. So sometimes there is a little bit of a wait, um, but it is, it's totally worth it. And you will gorge yourself if you go there. So I think Wisconsin Burger is the best burger that I have found here in Spokane. Can. All right, the third restaurant is for those people looking for a new brunch, or I mean, you can go for lunch and dinner as well, but we're gonna speak specifically about brunch at Elliot's in Urban Kitchen. So Elliot's is up on North Monroe in kind of that North Monroe district. Super eclectic, fun atmosphere, just a wide open restaurant with uh, some booth seating, but also some like longer farmhouse style tables that you might end up sharing a table with somebody, but that's kind of the vibe of the restaurant is community, getting to know other people, and so uh, it's very cool. They On Sunday brunch, they usually have a musician there just sitting in the restaurant playing guitar and singing. And I just think their menu is super awesome. So the insider secret on Elliot's and Urban Kitchen is that they not only have biscuits and gravy, which they just call B and G's, which is super good. The biscuits are amazing, but they also have a pork green chili uh, biscuits and gravy. And so it's kind of like a, you got your traditional one and then you kind of got this like Southwestern fun variation but local secret only the best way to order this is to go 50 50 so just it's not on they it doesn't, it's not an option on the menu but just say i want the b and g's 50 50 get the a on top seriously it's like it sounds so weird but it's so good it's so ridiculous and so i would head up elliot's brunch they have so much other super good stuff um omelets espanola uh amazing steak and eggs shrimp omelet uh veggie omelets veggie benedict all this kind of stuff. So I think it's super awesome, super fresh ingredients. Uh, the owner is a sweet, super sweet lady um, that is is just really supportive of the community, has come out to see my bands perform before. And so she's just, uh, yeah, she's awesome. So hit up Elliot's and Urban Kitchen just north of downtown for your next brunch stop. All right, the next one is somebody looking for a quick lunch break. Uh, they might be in downtown. They might be swinging through downtown and they just need something quick, easy and satisfying. And that would be Soulful Soup. Soul Soups is on Howard, North Howard downtown, not far from really anything down there, from, not far from the Davenport, not far from the, the River Park Square, the mall downtown. Uh, just a tiny little hole in the wall, but has some seriously bomb soup and not to knock the soup at all, but just the beer bread is serious, is where it's at. That's the good stuff. So uh, you just walk in, you just have, there's like usually eight to 10 soup options. Just pick one and then they'll serve it with a salad or you can get the bread, you can get bowls, whatever you want but it's always super satisfying the beer cheese soup again i don't know maybe there's a theme here i enjoy food i enjoy satisfying fulfill, like filling food and the beer cheese soup is definitely one of those things so dip the bread in that it's seriously amazing but you can get it to go if you're in a rush but you can sit in and just kind of enjoy the little bit
busyness of that block downtown. I think it's an awesome atmosphere, great vibes, and just another super, I think, hole in the wall that has been in Spokane for a really long time. But just, again, if you're Googling this type of stuff, where should I grab lunch in Spokane? It doesn't pop up as much. So uh, definitely check it out and go get some soup. All right, our last category is for just kind of the general one. I mean, it's our taco burrito category because that's a very important category here in Spokane. But this could be for lunch, for dinner. I just, there's a lot of taco burrito options in Spokane, but we're gonna assume that you're either swinging through downtown, you're driving through Spokane on somewhere else. You just wanna stop in really quick. And so we're gonna focus on our downtown core. And what I would say for something that is super fresh for local is Cochinito. Again, Cochinito is super centrally located, just a couple blocks from the Davenport Hotel, right next to the uh, bus plaza. And they are relatively new to Spokane, just been around a few years, but the tacos and the ingredients are so fresh and so good. And most recently I had them catered at um, an event. And so they, they brought the whole buffet style spread. And it was like, usually when you have those large portions, it's just like, it's not their best, but man, it was like, seriously, it was so good. Uh, like people were amazed. They even brought to our catered, it was just a catered lunch. They brought octopus like ceviche and everything. So they have a super fresh, unique menu. It's not like your heavy burrito uh, Mexican food. It's gonna be a light, fresh taco that you're gonna have a few different variations that you can pick from. Grab an, a great mixed drink while you're there. They have awesome margaritas, stuff like that. And even looking here, this is kind of to my point, their slogan is local and responsibly sourced ingredients prepared with fine dining techniques, all served in a casual atmosphere along with craft cocktails, thoughtfully selected uh, cervezas, I don't know how to say that, and spirits. Like I said, it's a casual, fun environment, but amazing chefs in the kitchen making super unique entrees, tacos, all that kind of stuff. Just a slight look at the taco list. They have a uh, octopus and papas bravas taco. They have fried maitake mushroom taco, beef and chorizo, 20 hour carne asada. So when you walk in there, you're gonna get a, a taco that just kicks some serious butt. So I think they're awesome. Uh, so those are our, our five places you should stop in downtown Spokane to eat. At. Maybe Google's not gonna t recommend to you right away. One thing I bonus category that I wanted to mention is dessert. And this is somewhere that I think Spokane is, is struggling right now dessert wise. And so they're nothing fancy, nothing like that. But if you're just swinging through, I would either go to Zips and get one of the best milkshakes ever. My personal favorite is the Huckleberry milkshake. At the bottom is like literally lined with like two inches of Huckleberries. Like there's hundreds of Huckleberries in each shake. It's crazy. I think they lose money on every single one because Huckleberries are so expensive. And if you have some time, head up to the top of the rocket or top of the South Hill and get what is how I pronounce it, a Nanaimo bar because these little chocolate bars of, of goodness are, I don't even know how to describe it, but they're so good. You can find them in some other places around town, some other grocery stores, but I know that you can go up to the rocket market off of 47th, 47th, 46th, 47th and uh, and get that there and stop in because they're a really cool little local grocery store and stuff as well. So yes, so that's your insider's guide to some amazing food here in Spokane. In the comments, if you're a Spokane local, drop your favorite places to eat and so that people watching this video know where to check out, where should they go that is maybe off the beaten path a little bit. Uh, my name is Hayden Halstead, favorite Spokane realtor. We'll see you in the next video. Thanks so much for watching.